Hello everyone, today I want to spend a few minutes to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. The size, particularly the thickness, because I think the specs published by Samsung is extremely misleading. Now this watch is pretty popular, it was launched last month, it comes in 43mm, that's the one in my hand, a silver one. Very nice, very pretty, they added back the rotating bezel which was a fan favorite. And there's a 47 millimeter size. Now, first of all, the weight. On the website, it said this 43 millimeter has a weight of 52 grams. But that's just the watch itself. It doesn't include the band. If you weight the watch, include this standard, you know, the leatherish rubber band. But it's 50, uh, it's 76.5 grams, 76.5. And if you replace this, you know, uh, with a lighter, Samsung fabric band. It's 59.5. I think it's important for them to put these numbers on instead of just showing the watch as 52 grams. It's very misleading to me. Um, number, so that's okay. I mean, the weight, you know, at the end of the day, 52, 76, it's not too bad. But the issue I have with them is the size. Now, it's a 43 millimeter, as I said, I'm having here, which is fine, 42 by 0.5 by 42 by 5, uh, which is you know decent size but they said the watch is 10.9 millimeters thick which is absolutely ridiculous to me because when i was looking at the photos before i saw this watch i was looking at my you know cheap everyday casio this is a 12.6 millimeter thick watch and when you look at the photos it is absolutely thicker than a 12.6 so what is going on here so basically what they're doing is they're not counting the depth from the glass to the top of the bezel. So they're essentially just counting the thickness from the bottom to the glass without counting the extra two millimeters from the glass to the top of the bezel. You know, that to me is basically not acceptable. You know, when you wear this watch, when you look at it you know, from the side or any angle, the top of the bezel is the top of the watch, not the glass that's two millimeters lower. So I used my own tools to measure it. Um, you know, nothing too fancy. It's just a basic digital um, tool I use for all my watch reviews. So what I discovered is if I just measure from the top of the bezel to the bottom without looking at the extra little bit the sensor section, right? Just basically only looking at the slightly lower side outside of the sensor. It's a little bit of a curved shape, so it's harder to get a perfect read. But I tried a few times. Essentially, from here, just inside the sensor to top of the bezel, that is 12.9. Okay, 12.9. And if you add a little bit extra for the sensor, a little bit extra bulk for the sensor. It's actually 14.6. Now that to me is the true height of this watch, which looks about the same, right? 14.6, it's not very thick. Uh, I mean, it's not super thick, but it's definitely, you know, fairly normal for a, you know, small watch because there are a lot of stuff packed in here. But that's it, 14.6, just, just say 14.6, right? So what they're doing is, they're not counting the extra sensor. They're basically using the lower part and then they're taking out the two millimeters gap between the glass and the top of the bezel. So 12.9 without the sensor minus the two. That's roughly based on my calc. That's 10.9. So when you look at the spec, 10.9, it's a very, very thin, skinny watch. When you wear it on your wrist, it makes a huge difference. Um, not a 14.6. I think this is critical for folks like us who have a smaller wrist. So let me just show it to you how this watch looks on my wrist. So my wrist is fairly small, six and a half inches, 16.5 centimeters. You know, 43, in my opinion, is the right size. I know these digital watches, people want to go as big, especially for the screen. And you know, this 1.3 versus 1.5 screen does make a big difference, quite frankly. Um, and also, you know, the 47 millimeter has a much bigger battery. I get that. Uh, but if you just look at the 43 on my six and a half inch, 16.5 centimeters, this is the, again, this standard strap. 
it's pretty tight, but you can still see because the watch is tall, right? It's sitting, the lighting is not the best today. You know, you can see it's sitting a little bit above because of the little sensor at the bottom. So you definitely have a little gap on both sides. And because of the way these straps are designed, you know, like a lot of the integrated, it's always going to be a little bit wider than the lug to lug, which is 50. Lug to lug is 50 on this watch. So the true width is wider. And my wrist, I measured it. So the width, even though circumference is 16.5 centimeters, the width is about, I think, 50 to 50, actually, what is it? 50 to 51 millimeters and about two inches wide. So with the, the leatherish rubber strap, it's good. It's, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks pretty good fit. But let me put on the fabric. I can show you the difference because you remember, I'm going to keep this piece on. Just put side. You will notice the fabric one will drop down directly. So make your small wrist look a little bit better fit. All right, I got the stock fabric band on. So you can see one side, I have that leatherish one. It's clearly you know, the little curve on the edge. No matter how you push it, it's going to have that little curve. But on the other hand, you can see this side right here, it's a direct drop down 90 degrees. You see? And that's why I feel if you have a smaller wrist like mine, I will always prefer to use a uh, fabric. Of course, the difference is, you know, this one is curved to the shape of the case. So it looks a little bit nicer, more integrated. You know, this one is just a straight line. There's, you know, you will see these gaps in between, which is fine. I don't really care. But the other thing is I feel like, because this is a pretty big watch, 43 or 42 point half, lug to lug 50. The 20 millimeter band looks way too skinny to me. I feel like when you wear it, uh, I'll put the other side on. It feels a little bit top heavy, um, especially if you're using the fabric band. I feel like it might be nicer to make it 21 or 22 millimeters wide. Again, just my personal view. Okay, the fabric strap is on. As you can see, I mean, I actually put it on the wrong side, but it's all right. I just want to demonstrate. You can see when the fabric stri stripe is tight, it basically drops down vertically, 90 degrees, right? It, it looks just much tighter versus, versus this. You've got the curve on the side. So fabric looks much better fit for a small wrist like me. So I would highly recommend uh, going for fabric. It comes with a white one as well, uh, and a light purple one. But like I said, it does feel very narrow. This 20 millimeter on this big gigantic watch feels very narrow, but the overall fit is good. Again, I put this on the other side. It should be on the other side, but... You know, I think if this watch is truly 10.9 millimeters thick, small risks definitely could uh, definitely could go for a larger screen, 47 millimeters, and should fit pretty comfortably on a six and a half inch wrist, 16.5. But because it is very thick, 14.6, truly top to bottom. I think a 46, if you want to go for a large screen and get that better battery life, it's gonna look uh, a little bit strange. Um, again, you know, you know, as I said many times, do whatever you like. But uh, my personal opinion is 43 fits much better, especially if you're going to wear like a dress shirt. The 47 with this kind of thickness is going to be very difficult. Or in the winter, you're going to have to wear a, like a quarter neck or sweatshirt to cover with a little bit tougher uh, a wrist area cuff. But anyway, you know, again, you know, I've, I'm a big Samsung fan. I use both Samsung phones and, you know, Apple phones for as long as I can remember. Uh, it's been a long time. And I'm one of the few people in my Circle. I'm still using the Samsung phone. In fact, I'm using the Samsung phone for the recording right now. Pretty much everyone, you know, is using Apple or whoever uses the Samsung have switched to Apple. You know, in the U.S., not globally. Globally, I think Samsung still has a little bit edge over Apple on the market share. I think uh, both are in the low 30 percent, but Samsung has a little bit more. But in the U.S., Apple has I think 58 percent market share. Samsung's only 26. I'm still holding, you know, holding out. Meaning, I'm still using. Samsung phones and Apple phone together, but you know, I just feel like dude, Samsung, come on. Just tell the truth. Don't try to, you know, fool people, give these wrong numbers or incorrect false numbers. Anyway, that's it uh, for today. Um, hopefully you liked the video and see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.